Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today's video is something that I've been wanting to cover for a little while now, but unfortunately haven't really been able to get around to it sooner. You can blame the holiday period and CES for that one. Anyway, last year Intel unveiled a new series of U-series laptop processors designed for ultra portables. And I use the term new quite loosely here. These CPUs are codenamed Whiskey Lake and they're still eighth generation parts. In fact, they're not radically different from Kaby Lake Refresh that came before it. The main change is the move from Intel's 14 nanometer plus to their 14 nanometer plus plus process node which has allowed slightly higher clock speeds within the same power envelope. The basic design of these CPUs is unchanged from the previous generation, which is probably why they're still being called 8th gen parts rather than 9th gen to fit in with Intel's current desktop lineup. There are also only three SKUs, the Core i7-8565U and Core i5-8265U are both four core 8 thread CPUs, while the Core i3-8145U is a dual core part with four threads. All are 15 watt parts, although the TDP can be configured anywhere from 10 watts to 25 watts, depending on what the OEM wants. The focus of this video is the Core i7-8565U, which is essentially the new flagship 15 watt CPU in Intel's lineup. This is a little confusing as previously there was a Core i7-8650U, but the 8565U is actually clocked higher at a single core turbo clock of 4.6 gigahertz up from 4.2 gigahertz and an all core turbo of 4.1 gigahertz up from 3.9 gigahertz. The base clock is a little lower though at 1.8 gigahertz compared to 1.9 gigahertz. And these clock speed increases are even more favorable when comparing the i7-8565U to the i7-8550U, which is more like for like in a comparison going on the naming scheme, comparing those two CPUs gives at least an 11% boost clock advantage to Whiskey Lake. It seems that a lot of OEMs weren't super excited by Whiskey Lake, unlike Kaby Lake Refresh that came before it, because we didn't see a lot of laptop refreshes in 2018 that decided to use these new parts. It's only now in 2019 at CES that more vendors are jumping on board, and I suspect that's due to relatively modest clock speed increases, making it not as much of an urgent or necessary upgrade. So in preparation for these 2019 releases, I'm going to be detailing how Whiskey Lake, specifically the Core i7-8565, View performs in comparison to a range of other laptop class processors. This should give you a good idea of how the CPU stacks up. It won't be a perfect reflection because laptop vendors can change you know, a number of different aspects, including the cooler memory configuration and TDPs, which all impact performance. But what I'll be showing today should be, I guess, very close to what you'll see in most laptop implementations. Crucially, I've tested the Core i7-8565U using the new Razer Blade Stealth, which is an excellent test platform for a number of reasons. Firstly, this laptop uses the 25 watt maximum TDP configuration for the CPU, so we'll see how this chip performs in devices that choose this configuration and have larger coolers. Dell, for example, tends to use 25 watts for their XPS line. Then, using Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility, I've also been able to set the CPU down to its regular 15 watt configuration. This is the most common configuration and reflects the majority of laptops that will use this CPU. Having both sets of data should give a pretty comprehensive look at how this processor performs. The Blade Stealth is also a good platform because it includes 16 gigabytes of dual channel memory. Again, that's a common configuration and dual channel is key because the best performing laptops have dual channel memory. On top of this, the laptop also has discrete NVIDIA GeForce MX150 graphics. So over this benchmark video, the MX150 has been disabled for all testing. A Razer Blade Stealth review will be up in a few days and that will cover the actual performance of this laptop with its discrete GPU enables. A few other things about Whiskey Lake to mention before we get into the benchmarks and those beautiful blue charts you all love. Firstly, the GPU and cache configuration are unchanged compared to Kaby Lake Refresh, so we're still looking at a UHD 620 GPU at up to 1150 MHz in the Core i7-8565U, along with 8 MB of level 3 cache. Typical PL2 power limits also appear to be unchanged, so we're still looking at short bursts up to 44 watts with the 15 watt configuration and 51 watts with the 24 5 watt configuration, although of course laptop OEMs can and do change these uh, metrics quite a lot depending on the models that they're producing. All right, let's take a look at performance, starting with Cinebench R15, a favorite of everyone reviewing a CPU for the past 
how many years now? Uh, the multi-threaded test is a relatively short benchmark, but it has a decent mix of both boost and steady state clock speed behavior. Despite higher boost clocks, the 8565U in its 15 watt configuration ends up only 3% faster than the 8550U in the multi-threaded test. The 25 watt configuration though gets a healthy 11% boost, which is in line with the boost clock difference. Both configs are a fair bit faster in the single threaded test here though. To explain what's going on, it's worth looking at a clock speed comparison during the Cinebench run. Both the 15 watt and 25 watt configurations start off at their maximum all core turbo clock speed, which is 3.7 gigahertz for the 8550U and 4.1 gigahertz for the 8565U. However, when the CPU reverts to its PL1 state, so it's no longer boosting anymore, there's quite a difference in behavior. The 25 watt 8550U is sitting around the 2.6 to 2.7 gigahertz mark. However, the 25 watt 8565U is up at 3.1 gigahertz. So that's a quite healthy gain for the 8565U and contributes to the larger gain in performance. When looking at the 15 watt CPUs, the 8550U sits at 2.2 to 2.3 gigahertz compared to 2.3 to 2.4 gigahertz for the 8565U. There is a gain for the 8565U, but it's not as large as you get at 25 watts. What's apparent here is that the advantages that 14 nanometers plus plus brings to Whiskey Lake aren't all that accessible with a tiny 15 watt power limit. Sure, you do get a decent jump in boost clock speeds, but when the CPU reverts to its long-term PL1 power state, there's not a lot to be gained from the 8565U. However, at 25 watts, the taps are opened a bit more and Whiskey Lake can stretch its legs to provide a decent jump in performance. Looking at the Cinebench R15 performance chart again, it's also quite impressive to see where the 25 watt configuration is sitting among the pack. The 25 watt 8565U is almost as fast as the Core i7 7700HQ in the multi threaded test, and it smokes it in the single threaded test. The 7700HQ is a 45 watt quad core designed for gaming laptops, so it's great to see that performance now available in ultra portable form factors. We see a similar situation in X264 encoding. The 25 watt 8565U is right up there with the 7700HQ, while the 15 watt configuration is providing up to an 8% gain over the 8550U. Handbrake X265 was a really interesting benchmark to run as it shows an even harsher reality for the 15 watt configuration of these CPUs. With this TDP limit, there was no difference in performance between the 8550U and 8565U, likely due to the use of AVX instructions that further limit what low power CPUs can achieve. However, with the 25 watt configurations, the 8565U is a good 17% faster, which is slightly above the difference in long term clock speeds. We also see that while the 8565U was close to the 7700HQ in previous tests, when AVX is required, the 7700HQ and other 45 watt CPUs begin to pull away. Adobe Premiere benefits strongly from GPU acceleration and the iGPU in these 15 watt CPUs is pretty weak. You can see that the top three CPUs that appear with discrete class graphics smoke the competition here. We also see the 15 watt 8565U fall slightly behind the 8550U, a strange result and the only benchmark where this was the case. That said, the 25 watt configuration is now 14% faster. Microsoft Excel is a workload that runs entirely within the PL2 boost state, so there is no difference in performance between the 25 watt and 15 watt configurations. The i7-8565U holds a small advantage over the 8550U, and both sit around the same mark as the 7700HQ, another impressive showing. MATLAB is another good result for the 8565U with an 8% gain present with the 15 watt configuration over the 8550U, while the 25 watt config jumps up to a 14% gain. Again, in this short burst single core workload, there's not a lot of difference between most of Intel's recent CPUs, and considering it also thrives on memory bandwidth where there has been virtually no improvement, we're left with a big clumping at the top of the chart. 7-Zip is another benchmark where we see small gen-on-gen -gen improvements with Whiskey Lake, mostly because, again, this test is short and runs in the boost clock zone. Not a lot more to say here, so let's move on. Adobe Photoshop shows some of the largest gains between generations, with the 15-watt SKU delivering 13% more performance, and the 25-watt SKU showing gains of 26%, much higher than the average. A very strong showing for Whiskey Lake here.
It's also worth looking at PCMark 10 here, where again we see decent generational gains between each CPU. The 15 watt SKU provides 12% more performance, which is in line with some of the single threaded short burst workloads we've seen, and that's largely what PCMark tests. I want to briefly touch on GPU performance as well, though there's not a lot to say here considering there hasn't been any change to the GPU in Whiskey Lake compared to KB Lake Refresh. Big gains are expected for the next generation, but we're not getting anything here. Looking across our 3D Mark workloads like Skydiver, most of the gains you're seeing are from higher CPU scores. When looking at purely GPU scores, there is next to no improvement. Also, in more GPU intensive workloads, Whiskey Lake still gets handily beaten by AMD's Ryzen mobile processors. It's now time to look through some overall summaries of how the Core i7 8565U performs. On average, the 15 watt configuration of the 8565U is 8% 8 faster than the 8550U, though these gains largely appear in either single threaded workloads, short workloads, or some combination of the two. In longer workloads like video encoding, you can expect less than a 5% performance improvement. When comparing the 25 watt configurations, the gains are more significant. Here we're up to a 15% improvement on average with quite a healthy gain in longer workloads. This is more in line with the clock speed differences between the two processors. The 8565U is simply clocked higher, so you can expect it to perform better, especially with a higher power limit. The 25 watt Core i7-8565U is also now delivering performance in line with the 45 watt Core i7-7700HQ in some workloads. The 8565U is less than 1% behind on average. This means that in the space of roughly two years, Intel has been able to take gaming laptop level CPU performance and put that into ultra portable type chassis. Sure, you need to use the upper end 25 watt configuration to achieve this, but it's impressive considering all the hate Intel does get for its 14 nanometer plus plus process tech. And then when comparing the 15 watt 8565U to even just the Core i7-7500U from a few years ago, it's pretty much a non-contest. With double the core and thread count, the 8565U is on average 35% faster, and that margin only increases when looking strictly at multi-core workloads. If you're coming from a dual-core ultra portable to a quad-core Whiskey Lake system, expect to see significant performance improvements across all workloads, either from the doubling of cores or from the large clock speed gains. So overall, I think there's a couple of ways to look at what Whiskey Lake is bringing to the table. On the one hand, there's not a lot to be gained in its 15 watt configuration. We're looking at single digit improvements for the most part, and sometimes for longer workloads, no improvements compared to KB Lake Refresh. Intel's 14 nanometer node is clearly limiting them from achieving larger gains. The shift to 14 nanometer plus plus, I guess, can only do so much. The best you'll get from Whiskey Lake is in the 25 watt configuration, where performance improvements tend to match the clock speed gains more closely at around a 15% improvement. However, it's rare to find a 25 watt system. The 15 watt config is much more common. So for the majority of buyers looking at a Whiskey Lake system, there's not a lot of incentive to upgrade from KB Lake Refresh or to buy a Whiskey Lake system if it costs more than a last gen KB Lake R machine. However, on the other hand, it's hard not to be impressed with what Intel has achieved over the last few years without significant advances to process technology. Sure, on the desktop, 14 nanometer plus 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 plus, I guess, is now a bit of a joke, and performance gains you know, outside of increased core counts are anywhere from unimpressive to non existent. But on the mobile side, within the same sorts of ultra portable laptop designs, we've gone from two cores at modest clock speeds to four cores at reasonably high clock speeds on largely the same process node and architecture. Performance that used to be restricted to gaming laptops is now accessible in more portable form factors, which is certainly very impressive. And while Whiskey Lake isn't a huge step over KB Lake Refresh, it will be a massive improvement to anyone upgrading from a dual core 7th gen system or earlier. Typical laptop upgrade cycles are quite long. If you're using a four year old laptop, for example, you can expect huge improvements upgrading to something 8th gen. That said, I'd still shop around because you don't necessarily need Whiskey Lake to access those gains. KB Lake R is also fine. There is still one lingering issue with Intel's mobile processors, and that's the GPU side. With basically zero improvements in this department for generations now, Intel are lagging way behind what is required for a modern ultra portable. AMD has realized this as their beefy Vega GPU in their Ryzen mobile APUs handily crush Intel's integrated graphics. Lots of OEMs have also realized and are starting to pair NVIDIA's MX150 discrete GPU with Intel's 15 watt CPUs to get that extra GPU performance.
It does seem like Whiskey Lake is a bit of a stopgap until Intel can get their 10 nanometer CPUs out of the door at the end of 2019, which will bring a much larger and more competitive Gen 11 integrated GPU. With only 5 to 15% performance gains on the CPU side as well, it's really all Intel could do at this point, and OEMs weren't exactly rushing out Whiskey Lake systems, and I think that is a reflection of this overall situation that Intel is finding themselves in. Anyway, that's it for this look at Whiskey Lake Performance with the Core i7-8565U. Sorry to those who are waiting for us to cover this new laptop CPUs. It's been out for, I guess, a little while now. Uh, we'll also be back in a few days to fully check out the new Razorblade Stealth, so stay tuned for that. As always, you can subscribe for more content. Consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to our awesome Discord community, and I'll catch you in the next one.